Hello and welcome to a walking photo tour of Sea Houses. Today we shall be taking in some of the finest sights of Sea Houses, which is a small fishing port and a popular staging post for visitors to the Farne Islands. Before we begin, can we just establish that Sea Houses is a village, albeit a rather large one. It does not have a fixed marketplace, which is a usual requirement for a town. We begin at the station yard along State Car Park, where most visitors to the village will park their vehicles. From there we walk in a northwesterly direction along Seafield Road before doubling back and heading down onto the harbour. As we enter the harbour we pass the lifeboat station and the various ticket booths selling Farn Island boat trips. After taking a stroll along each of the three piers we leave the harbour via Harbour Road and climb the bank onto Crew Street. The elevated position of Crew Street affords spectacular views of the harbour, North Beach, Farn Islands and Barnborough Castle in the distance. After pausing to take in the view, we walk along South Street, which is home to popular local fishmonger Swallowfish. We then head back towards the centre of the village via Union Street, North Street and Dunstan View. After Dunstan View, we walk along the main thoroughfares of King Street and Main Street, before arriving back at the Station Yard car park, where we end our walking tour. The total distance is about 2.8 kilometres, with a walking time of about 45 minutes. The route is easy walking, apart from the fairly steep climb out of the harbour. We start in the Station Yard car park, which is the location of the Tourist Information Centre and the public toilets. As the name suggests, it was once home to Sea Houses Railway Station, which was the terminus of the North Sunderland Railway, a branch line between Chat Hill on the East Coast Main Line and North Sunderland Harbour. Across from the entrance to the car park you will find the Farn Gift Shop, which sells all manner of Sea Houses memorabilia to the many tourists that visit the village. The Farn Gift Shop has also adopted a pound shop retail model, which no doubt helps it to survive on local custom during the quieter winter months. We are now walking along Seafield Road. To the left is Sea Houses Coast Guard Station and the former Coast Guard Houses, some of which are now available as holiday lets. Ahead and to the left is Seafield Park, which is home to The Bunker, a fast food restaurant and takeaway with an indoor soft play area. In the park adjacent to the bunker you'll find an 18 hole crazy golf course which has holes modelled on prominent local landmarks like Bambra Castle. To the rear of the crazy golf course there is a grassed area where people can sit down and relax, watch the world go by or enjoy a picnic.
The B1340, which connects many of North Northumberland's coastal villages, passes along Seafield Road. If we continue in this direction, we will end up in the neighbouring village of Bamborough. Approaching on the left is the popular Seafield Caravan Park. Located on the park is the Ocean Club Leisure Complex, which offers a wide range of facilities to park residents and villagers alike. The Ocean Club has a 20 metre indoor swimming pool, fully equipped gym, sauna and spa. It offers a range of health and beauty treatments and has a coffee shop serving a good selection of hot and cold drinks and light meals. On the opposite side of the road you'll find St Aidan's Dunes, which run in a northerly direction up the seafront towards Bamborough. The popular North Beach and Bamborough Castle can be seen in the distance. The rocks immediately to the north of the harbour, which are shown now in the footage, are the ideal place to spend an afternoon rock pooling. We are now retracing our steps along Seafield Road, back towards the centre of the village. The harbour is still officially called North Sunderland Harbour, which is a lasting legacy of when the villages of Seahouses and North Sunderland, a mile or so further inland, were separate entities.
As the years have gone by, the two villages have gradually merged into one. The combination is almost exclusively referred to as sea houses by all but the oldest of residents. As we descend into the harbour, we pass the Sea Houses lifeboat station on the left. The village has a proud maritime history, with the Farn Islands, just a few miles offshore, being the scene of a famous rescue by local heroine Grace Darling. The station has two lifeboats, a small rigid inflatable boat which bears the name of Grace Darling and is used for inshore work, and a Shannon class or weather lifeboat named John and Elizabeth Allen. We shall see both of the lifeboats a little bit later on. There are several ticket kiosks located in the harbour selling boat trips to the Farne Islands. The islands, which are nearly all managed by the National Trust, are home to a varied range of bird and aquatic life, including puffins, kittiwakes and grey seals. There are several wrecks around the islands, making them a popular venue for scuba diving. We are now walking along the North Pier, which vessels use as a guide to enter the harbour. The pier faces the full force of the North Sea gales and crashing waves. Over the years, a concrete structure had deteriorated as it was slowly eaten away by the sea. It recently underwent £3 million worth of restoration to extend its life by a further 20 years. Historically, North Sunderland Harbour was an important fishing port. Older sea houses residents fondly remember a time when they could walk from one side of the harbour to the other using the tied up fishing boats as stepping stones. There are now only a few working fishing boats left in the harbour. The main business of North London Harbour today is boat trips to the Farne Islands and diving charters. During the winter months the harbour is virtually deserted.
beyond the end of the North Pier you can see the breakwater in the distance. We're now walking along the inner pier. Coming into view now, just behind the South Pier, you can see the inshore lifeboat, the Grace Darling.
The lifeboats are crewed by local volunteers who have undergone specialist training. On average there are around two emergency callouts every month. Today the crew of the inshore boat are taking part in a training exercise around the harbour. Alongside the pier now you can see the Shannon class all weather lifeboat, the John and Elizabeth Allen. The brand new state of the art all weather lifeboat only arrived at sea houses in October 2020. We are now walking along Harbour Road. Harbour Hill, over to our right hand side with its rows of seagull splattered wooden benches, is a popular vantage point overlooking the harbour. The 
visitors to see houses like nothing better than sitting on Harbour Hill eating fish and chips or licking a coxswain's ice cream while they enjoy the view out to the Farn Islands. Unfortunately, we weren't able to walk along the South Pier today. The pier is normally open to members of the public. This is still Harbour Road. The road climbs steeply for a short distance until we join Crew Street. This small section of beach, nestled within the safety of the harbour, is very popular with families. We are now joining Crew Street. Crew Street affords spectacular views of the harbour, North Beach and Barbara Castle in the distance. These benches really are the best seats in sea houses. When North Sunderland Harbour was built, engineers needed to shape the landscape by blasting chunks from the windstone substrate. To the south of the harbour, in the centre of the shot, is the Fluke Hole, which is a safe haven for boats to moor. The artificial channel to the fluke hole was blasted with explosives. The small building on the rocks beyond is the powder house where the explosives were stored.
If we continue south along the cliff top, we will arrive at Sea Houses Golf Club. The neighbouring village of Beedenall lies two miles beyond that. Instead, we continue our journey along South Street, which is home to popular local fishmonger Swallowfish. Many of the houses and apartments in this part of the village are holiday lets or second homes. The unmistakable aroma of burning oak must mean that we are approaching the smokehouse of swallow fish. The business has been based on South Street since 1843 and its natural smoking process, with no artificial colours or preservatives, has changed very little since then. Next door to the smokehouse is the fisherman's kitchen, where a range of the finest quality fish and shellfish are available for purchase. Orders can also be placed on the Swallowfish website. This is Union Street. This is North Street, home to the Black Swan Inn and the Schooner Inn.
This is Dunstan View. At the top of Dunstan View is King Street, one of the main thoroughfares through the village. If you follow the B1340 to the left, you'll end up in Beadnell and then eventually the county town of Annick. We're heading to the right, which will take us back into the centre of Sea Houses. King Street joins Main Street at the roundabout up ahead. If you follow Main Street up to the left you'll end up in North Sunderland. Instead we're turning to the right which will lead us back down towards the harbour. Co-op on Main Street is the only supermarket in Sea Houses. Trotter's Family Bakery is under the awning on the left hand side. It has a fine selection of pies, pastries and sandwiches.
the shop with the black sign is Lewis's Fish Restaurant. On the right hand side here is an amusement arcade. Remember that the National Trust manages most of the Farn Islands. The Trust has a shop in the centre of sea houses. On the right hand side is the Pinnacles Fish Restaurant. At the very bottom of Main Street is the Old Ship Hotel, which is very highly regarded by locals for the quality of its food. We're now at the top of Harbour Hill where we saw people enjoying their fish and chips and ice creams earlier. The white painted building opposite is the Bamber Castle Hotel which again is very highly regarded for the fine quality of its food.
just around the corner to the right is the Neptune Fish Restaurant, the third and final of Seahouse's fish and chip restaurants. I couldn't possibly pass comments on which is the finest fish and chip shop in Seahouse's. Seahouse's War Memorial is at the centre of the roundabout. The Grade 2 listed granite obelisk was erected in 1923 by Riefel and Tebbs of Anik. It bears matching bronze plaques on its front and rear faces. We are now arriving back at the station yard car park, which signals the end of our walking tour of sea houses. I hope you have enjoyed our walk around this popular tourist village and found my snippets of information interesting. If so, please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.